Hello there and welcome to A Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at second order differential equations so we can answer questions from exercise 7D. Hopefully you've already watched exercise 7B and C because that's the main bit of second order differential equations. All we're now going to do is go ahead and work out the constants of integration, the A and the B, at the front of the complementary function. So it's not the plus C at the end that we're working out here, it's the A and the B, the capital A and the capital B, that we have at the front of all of our complementary function bits. So let me show you a question in action. Find y in terms of x, given that we have this second order differential equation, and that when x equals 0, y equals 0, and dy by dx equals 0. That extra bit of information is uh, important because we need to find two variables. So we've got one pair to plug in, x equals 0, y equals 0, and x equals 0, dy by dx equals 0 is another pair, and that will help us work out what the two letters a and b are. So let's go ahead and solve this. Start with the complementary function. Go to the auxiliary equation first. Solve the auxiliary equation and we get uh, 1 and minus 1. So therefore the complementary function is just going to be the bog standard real one with two different roots in it. So it's going to be a e to the x and b e to the minus x. Now that we have 2e to the x on the other side, there is an overlap between the complementary function that has a e to the x and 2e to the x, because the e to the x powers are exactly the same. If on the right hand side this was something like e to the 3x, e to the 4x, there would be no overlap. But because it's exactly the same power on the x, there is an overlap between what we're going to use in our particular integral and what we already have in our complementary function. So hopefully you remember what to do at that point it's going to be multiply it by x. Include an x in your expression for y. So you would normally suggest lambda e to the x, but because it's also included in the complementary function, you have to multiply that by x. So let's go ahead now and start differentiating. We're going to be differentiating using the product rule here. So differentiating using the product rule, we take, split them up into your two separate functions, differentiate them separately, and then do a bit of cross multiplying just like that. And we'll have to do it again for the second derivative as well, just like that. So it's this one here, you differentiate that with respect to uh, x by the product rule, but this one at the back here, you don't need to use the product rule on it. So that is what you'll get using the product rule, and the last bit differentiated will give you this bit. So that will lead you to a total seconds derivative of lambda x e to the x, plus 2, because you can simplify the back 2 here, 2 lambda e to the x. Okay, so we've done all that differentiating. We now need to plug it into the second derivative and work out what lambda is going to be. So plug it all in, and we should get the lambda x e to the x's cancel out. So therefore, lambda equals 1, because we can see here it's 2 lambda equals 2, so lambda equals 1. And the other terms will cancel out. So it's lambda is 1, so you put lambda up here where you suggested your y function, so it's 1x e to the x. Hopefully that's all just a recap of what we've done in the previous videos, uh, but really um, highlighting here, when you have an overlap between your complementary function and your particular integral, you've got to multiply your suggestion by x. Okay. Let's now move on to the next bit, because the next bit's the new bit. So when x equals 0, y equals 0, and dy by dx equals 0. So let's now use this information, plug it in, and work out what a and b need to be. So the first thing we used was x equals 0, y equals 0. So we plugged y is 0, a, x is 0 in, and we're going to get that uh, a plus b equals 0. So that's, we've still got two letters in this, and now we need to differentiate that uh, y function, use the product rule where you need to, and then plug that in, and it's x equals 0, dy by dx equals 0 this time. So that's the second pair of inputs that we're going to use. And when we plug in using those inputs, we're going to get a minus b plus 1, so therefore minus 1 equals a minus b. And now we've just got two quite simple uh, simultaneous equations that now need solving. So add them together, you get a is minus a half, uh, and then find out what b is, and you get a half. So your final answer to this question then 
including working out the constants of integration, is this thing here. y equals minus a half x e to the x plus a half e to the minus x plus x e to the x. Lovely, there we are. So that's all we need to do for exercise 4D. Let's have a look at another one then. So it's lambda sine 2t, given that the particular integral of the form is of the form lambda t sine 2t. Okay, so we're given an extra bit of information here that the particular integral is of this form, so that can save us a bit of time when we get to the particular integral bit. Find the solution of the differential equation d squared x by dt squared plus x equals 3 sine 2t. Okay, well it's different here, it's not y's and x's, it's x and t's, but just treat your x's as y's and your t's as x's. And we're also given that when t is 0, x is 0, and the dx by dt is 0, is 1, so. Okay, so let's first work out the complementary function then, so go to your auxiliary equation, and work out what m needs to be, and m here is going to be plus or minus i. So substitute that into the complex uh, form of the complementary function. It's going to be zero real parts and one as the coefficient on the imaginary part. So it's going to be e to the zero x, uh, or e to the zero t, which just cancels out to be one. And then plug q in as the value one. It says a cos t plus b sine t. That's the complementary function. Now. So this here, yeah, boom, this is the complementary function here. Now, a good question to ask yourself is, will this get in the way? Will there be an overlap between the complementary function and the particular integral? No, not in this case, because it's sine 2t. They'd have to be exactly the same coefficient on the t if they were to overlap. This In this question, they do not overlap because it's sine t and sine 2t. So there's no overlap. No multiplying by x needs to happen. So we know the complementary function. Now we know, so we, we are going to do this question a little bit differently to a standard question because we know that the form of, a, of the particular integral is this thing here. Usually we would suggest adding mu plus cos 2t, but not in this question. We know that it's going to be of that form because it's told it to us in the question. So we're going to suggest the complementary function is x equals lambda sine 2t. Let's differentiate it once, differentiate it twice, and then plug it into the differential equation and set it equal to 3 sine 2t. Lovely, so that's us substituting it in. And then simplify and you get minus 3 lambda sine 2t equals 3 sine 2t. So lambda must therefore be minus 1. And then for the particular integral, go back up to what you suggested, x equals, and replace lambda with the value minus 1. So it's minus sine 2t. And then just add the complementary function and the particular integral together to get your final answer. x equals a cos t plus b sine t minus sine 2t. But we can go even further. We could work out the value of the coefficients a and b using our inputs here. So let's go ahead and do that. When t is equal to 0, x is equal to 0. So when we substitute that in, remember cos of 0 is 1 and sine of 0 is 0. So therefore a will give you 0. As we found the value of a straight away, we can update the equation for x. This is an important step as it can make the next step, differentiation, much easier. So if we now know that a is 0, it's just 0 times cos t, so you can just cancel out the cos t. This is the updated equation then, and now we'll differentiate that again. Uh, so differentiate it, and now we'll plug in t equals 0, and the derivative equals 1. So plug 0 and 1 in, and work out what b needs to be. 1 equals b minus 2, so b here is equal to 3. So your final answer to this question here is x equals 0 cos t, so we won't write that, equals, so, uh, plus 3 sine t minus sine 2t. So there we are, it's basically exactly what we saw in 7b and 7c, just at the final stage, plug in t equals 0, x equals 0, and you differentiate it, t equals 0, d, x by dt equals something, and then work out what your a's and b's are. 
Lovely, there we are. Okay, time for you to have a go at a question of your own then. So have a go at question five uh, from page 164, exercise 7D, please, everyone. Okay, let's have a go at question A then. So it's going to be the auxiliary equation of 4m squared plus 4m plus 5 equals 0. Let's now try, uh, I don't think you can solve this in real numbers, so it's probably imaginary numbers. It's going to be 2m plus 1 squared um, plus 1 equals 0. Because, uh, so no, 0 plus 4 equals 0 because... Um, it's going to be 2m plus 1, so that would be uh, 4m squared, and then it would be 2m plus 2m, so that would be 4m, and then plus 1. So yeah, good, that's the answer. So it's then going to be 2m plus 1 squared equals minus 4. Get rid of the square root, and it's going to be 2m plus 1 equals plus or minus 2i. And then we'll start to move stuff onto the other side, so it's going to be m equals um, minus a half plus or minus i. So let's now write out the complementary function. The complementary function is going to be um, y equals uh, e to the minus half x bracket p si so p cos uh, and then one t or one x rather uh, plus q sine x. Okay, there we are. That's the answer to the um, complementary function. Now, what you're probably thinking is, does the complementary function overlap the particular integral? No, it doesn't in this case because uh, there's no e to the minus half x at the front of the complement at the front of the um, particular integral. So we're just going to then suggest y equals, uh, let's call it lambda sine x plus mu cos x. Let's differentiate it once, so we're going to get dy by dx equals uh, lambda cos x minus mu sin x. And then let's do the second derivative. That would be minus lambda sin x minus mu cos x. Okay, what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to substitute all three of these into the second order differential equation and then set it equal to the right hand side. But I'm going to do it strategically. I'm going to do it having factorized it already. So it's going to be sine and then so cos and then something plus sine x and then something. And then this will equal to sine x plus 4 cos x. Okay, so it's going to first be five, so four lots of the second derivative. So it's going to be minus four lambda and minus four mu for the cos. It's going to be four lots of the first derivative. So for cos, that's going to be four lambda. And for sine, it's going to be minus four mu. Then it's going to be five lots of the first equation. So that for sine, that's going to be five lambda. And for cos, it's going to be 4 mu. OK, this nicely cancels out the plus and the minus on the, so f no, 4, it'd be 5, won't it? So no, so it won't cancel out, it'd be 5. So no, so it won't cancel out. So on the cos equation, it's going to be um, mu plus 4 lambda equals the coefficient of cos, which is 4. And for sine, it's going to be lambda minus 4 mu, which is going to equal 1, that's the coefficient on the sine. I've written these the other way around, which I really shouldn't have, so I'm just going to delete that and write it as minus 4 mu plus lambda equals 1. What I think I'll do now, I'm running out of space, so I might move on to the next page soon. I'll times this first equation by 4, so that will give me 4 mu plus 16 lambda equals 16. So let's multiply it all by 4, and then I'm going to add it to this equation down the bottom here. So when I add the two equations, I'm going to get 17 lambda equals 17. 
So therefore I know that lambda is equal to 1. So call this equation number 1. Call this equation number 2. Is it 1 plus 2? And then if lambda is 1, then what is mu going to be? Well, if it's 1 here, I'm going to get mu is uh, 0. Mu is 0. Okay, so let's uh, let's just use let's use the next page to work out the next bit. Okay, so this is what we got from the previous page. We knew that uh, lambda is equal to 1, and then when we go back to the original equation, lambda was in front of sine, so it's plus 1 sine and 0 coses. And then remember, we've also got to include the complementary function, so it's the complementary function plus this sine x on the particular integral. Now we can work out what a and b are, so now we're going to have a go at part b. So when x equals 0, y equals 0, so let's plug those two values in. So it's going to be 0 equals e to the power of 0 is 1. So that bracket will effectively just be a 1. And then it's going to be p times cos of 0. Cos of 0 is 1, so it's going to be p. Sine of 0 is 0, and sine of 0 is 0. So in this question, p is equal to 0. Moving on to the next part. But before we move on to the next part, we need to differentiate. So dy by dx equals, uh, it's going to be e to the, we're going to have to do this by the product rule, so I'll differentiate the first part first, bear with me, let's just rub that out, let's correct that, so it's going to be um, minus a half e to the minus half x, and then inside the brackets is p cos x plus q sin x, And then, so that's the first part of the product rule where I've differentiated this part here, left this part alone. Let's do the second part of the product rule now. It's going to be e to the minus half x. And then I differentiate the inside. So that's going to be minus p sine x plus q cos x. Okay, that's the second part of the product rule done. And to differentiate sine, you get cos. Okay, let's now plug in uh, x equals 0, dy by dx equals 0. So that's going to be 0 equals, all of this expression here will tend to minus a half. Then it's going to be p, because cos of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0, so there's nothing much else that will happen there. And then it's going to be plus 1 lot of... Uh, Q, um, yeah, just Q, because this would tend to 1, this would tend to 1, so it would be Q, and then it would be plus 1. P, oh, we also know that P is 0, so that can just disappear. So Q is therefore going to equal minus 1. So, final answer. So we'll just now plug everything into the uh, into the equation at the top. So it's going to be y equals e to the minus half x bracket p is 0, so that can be left alone. It's going to be minus uh, sine x. And then it's going to be plus sine x again. I suppose we could rewrite it as y equals sine x factorizing that out, and then 1 minus e to the minus half x. Okay, there we are, and that's the answer to question 5 on exercise 7d. So, hopefully you found that uh, video helpful and the example that we've just gone through helpful as well. Uh, 
Make sure you have a go at plenty of the exam style questions, the problem solving questions from exercise 7D. And, uh, and yeah, hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks very much for watching.